Well, we've spoken plenty about the budget and have now heard both from the government and from Labour. Let's see what business and the unions think of what they've heard this morning. So I can speak now to Siobhan Haviland, who is the Director General of the British Chambers of Commerce, and Paul Novak, who's the Secretary General of the Trade Union Congress. Good morning, Siobhan. Um, morning. Uh, did anything that you heard from the Chancellor this morning lift your heart? <laughs> so, it's always... Gr well, what do we hear from the Chancellor? Some progress towards tax cuts, possibly. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's always great to see things that put money back into people's pockets. Businesses like to see that, obviously, if they spend it. Um, but I think what we would say to the Chancellor is we need to think about things that are long-term, Trevor, that are sustainable for the economy and focusing on a thriving economy, growing businesses, of course, mean more jobs, which means more taxes. Back to you, Chancellor. Uh, and, and taxes that can pay for our public services. So we need an economy that's get firing on all cylinders. He made an interesting point, though, uh, which is that for some businesses, uh, or at least he made the case, that for some businesses, tax cuts might be attractive, but actually what's more important is putting money into, let's, not his words, my word, infrastructure, um, future development, technology and so on. Where, where are your members on that? So, uh, look... We're in a difficult economic situation. The good news is our latest quarterly forecast has seen sort of some you know, positive news. We're going to come out, I think, of this re technical recession fairly fairly swiftly. We're, we're, we're looking at about half a percent growth this year, so it's still really tight. And what we're saying to the Chancellor is, you know, it's great. Uh, you, you said it to him when you met him this week, did you? I did meet him okay. this week, yeah. I always okay. meet him before any uh, fiscal moment. Um, it, great to see, you know, what he put in place in the autumn budget, full expensing, business rates relief. Uh, and this time round, what we want to see is business and government working in partnership uh, to build that momentum. So we want to see movement on planning. We're building a planning fund. We oh. want him to match fund that. We want to see him look at... VAT threshold. So as a business, you only pay VAT once you get to £85,000 turnover, but that is stopping business growing. We want to see movement on international tax-free shopping okay. and skills. I want to come back to the, what you want in a second, but let me turn to Paul Novak from the TUC. Uh, Paul, you, I think you listened or saw the Chancellor's interview. Um, are you cheered up this morning? Uh, morning, Trevor. No, I'm not cheered up, and I'm really worried, actually, that what we're going to see is a budget that is long on gimmicks and short on real action to tackle the long-term problems in the, the UK economy. We're the only G7 economy in recession. Uh, we've got persistent problems around productivity, around skills, around infrastructure, as you mentioned. That has a real-world world impact on the millions of people that we represent. Wages in real terms are lower than they were in 2000. And eight, household debt is soaring. 70% of the kids who live in poverty in this country have at least one parent uh, who goes out to work. And our public services, Trevor, are in a mess. I can't think of one public service that is better now than it was 14 years ago. So I'd like to see the Chancellor setting out, you know, long-term plans to tackle, you know, growth in the economy, uh, the cost of living crisis, our public services. I don't think he's going to do that uh, this weekend. You know, my expectations are low and I fully expect uh, Jeremy Hunt to live down to those expectations. Uh, but aren't, aren't you, um, in a way, uh, going against a consensus that seems to be growing across uh, both front benches, which is reduce taxes on working people, i.e., translate that into national insurance cuts. And I got the sense that we might see another one. You, sure, presumably you'll welcome that. Well, well, anything that eases the pressure on working people and their families in the midst of a cost of living crisis uh, uh, is, is welcome. But no one thinks that this is really going to solve the deep rooted problems in terms of people's living standards uh, and, and, and wages. And this is a short term sticking plaster. Uh, as I say, there are things that the, the Chancellor could do. He could set out, for example, uh, plans for a real coherent industrial strategy, a proper, properly funded industrial strategy. He could set out a plan for our public services to tackle the, the recruitment and retention crisis we have in our public Public services, 300,000 vacancies in the NHS and social care alone. So saying, to, for example, to public sector workers they can expect not to take a real terms cut in their living standards this year in their pay would, 
uh, be welcome. And there's things he could do as well around uh, the minimum wage, immediate support for those most vulnerable in our society in terms of cost of living payments. Mm. I don't think he's going to get there at all, Trevor. And as I say, I think this will be a budget that is long gone gimmicks. We heard today in the, uh, in the press about the war on woke in the public sector. Uh, you know, it, it's ironic, isn't it? We have a Prime Minister who gets up on Friday and says that we need to counter the divisions that emerge in our society. And then the Chancellor on the Sunday yep. talking about you know, effectively stoking those culture wars. I, I, I'm very struck that um, actually both of you, Siobhan, are rather lukewarm about tax cuts and that it sounds like both of you would rather, if there's any free money going, uh, like to see it going into other things, public services or infrastructure and so on. The Chancellor has to strike a balance between making people feel better off and their tax burden and helping the economy build and thrive in the long term. And by... I mean, businesses have huge stresses around the cost, inflation, interest rates, you know, their energy bills. It's still number one issue is getting people and getting people with the right skills. So there's massive pressure on business um, and therefore there's massive pressure on margins and they're not investing. And they're, if they're not investing, the economy isn't growing. And as Paul said, you know, a long-term plan for the economy, long-term economic growth is, is the thing that will help consumers and people in the long term. Siobhan, Paul, thank you both very much for your time this morning. Thank you.